me and Chuck have built quite a friendship, friendship too. We'll probably open with that, honestly. Here we go. Okay. Oh, can we minimize? Can we minimize this big dog? Ready? Oh, hey, hey, let's minimize this. If we can. My bad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, got a big show for you guys playing tonight. I've been trying to get another football guy on this show for a long time. We've, we've tried with, you know, guests. It's a little tough because of COVID and whatnot, but everybody's, you know, very adverse or versed in Zoom at this point. So Zoom's kind of easy, but Zoom, sharing screen, drawing plays, it can get a little tough. So I'm just going to let you know ahead of time tonight, if there's any technical difficulties, I'm sorry. It is what it is. This is a tough business and some tough technology that we're trying to work with, but Again, super, super excited about tonight's show. We're going to be bringing you a guy that's actually played in Kirby Smart's defense and done it at a really high and successful rate uh, at a position heading into 2021 that Georgia's got some real question marks about and question marks defensively just as a whole. What are they going to do with their defensive backfield? They're a little thin back there. Are they going to still try to stay in nickel, maybe even dime defense throughout the majority of football games? Or are they going to get back to more of a traditional 3-4 set as they did in 2016 and a little bit in 2017. And I'm honored to bring on my guest here, Davin Bellamy, now with the Tennessee Titans. Davin, how are we doing today, my man? Oh, man, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, man. No doubt. No doubt, brother. You just kicked the, the, the brand new Husky. How old's your Husky? You got a Husky named Kobe, right? Is that correct? Named name after Kobe Bryant, you know. Um, but he's three years old. Okay, you so know, he's I, out of the puppy I, stage. I, and at this point, he's probably shedding all over your house getting it nice and filled with a whole bunch of hair. Is that correct? Having a Husky in the South, man, around this time. OD. It's nothing you can do. It's everywhere on all my black clothes, but I love them, man. So, you know, that's what I take, you know what I'm saying, having them. I love, I love how you clarified that he was named after Kobe Bryant as if there was another Kobe to have named <laughs> him after. Uh, but Davin, man, I, I was wondering, I was doing some research on you pre-show. Do you rep Gwinnett or do you rep Brookhaven? I know you're from that Northeast Atlanta area. What do you call home, my man? Actually, man, uh, my mother worked at Shambly. Okay. So that's, that's the way I was able to go to school there. But I'm actually from DeKalb County, man. Uh, I got you. Like that coach the highway area. But uh, so I rep, you know what I'm saying, DeKalb. But I always got love for my Shambly people. So and basically, I was basically racing Shelly, so. Hey, I mean, know, not, not, not far from DeKalb County, right? Just shot up 285 right, right. there. So, no, hey, that's, that's, that's close quarters. We'll call you a DeKalb no, boy. No. A lot of talent out of the DeKalb County area. But um, settling in with your new team, and I just got picked up uh, by the Tennessee Titans, man. It's been kind right. of a bounce around, you know, experience for you since no, you've no. left Georgia. No, no. Kind of give the Georgia fans who maybe haven't been following up with your, you know, professional career, kind of give us a, a rundown of, of what you've been doing the last three or four years. All uh, right, man. I was in Houston at first, uh, you know what I'm saying, a great organization. Mm -hmm. uh, I came to a, a place where it was, you know, uh, J.J. Watt, J.B. Clowney, Whitney Merciless, and I was just so blessed, you know what I'm saying, one, to just be able to learn, you know what I'm saying, from those guys. You know, uh, I was on a team with – Tyran Matthews mm -hmm. and just so much. And um, I think my time in Houston, you know, was a time to, you know, just learn from the older players, you know, saying soak up the game and um, kind of, man, that's kind of just where I've been, man. And, and I'm trying to get over that hump and, you know, we got to keep working and see how it goes. Yeah. It's all about making a squad at this point. I know last year was really tough because there was that condensed preseason. So guys like you that may be, 54th, 55th on that 53-man roster. It's kind of oh, hard God. to fight for that last couple of spots. No. So hopefully this year we get a normal OTA experience. You get in there and in a pretty friendly system for you right there at Tennessee, right? You're not really a traditional defensive end, but you're not really a traditional outside backer. You need somebody that's playing an odd front defense. Isn't that correct? Yeah. No doubt, no doubt. You know, that's what I was doing at Georgia. You know, mm -hmm. we kind of like the place, you know, 3-4, uh, Sam backer, 4-3 D in, you yeah. know, and Kind of did the same thing in Houston, matter of fact. You know, it's kind of the same defense. So I'm kind of a 3 4 guy. And uh, the defense that we ran at Georgia were really already NFL defenses. So that really prepares you, you know what I'm saying, for the next level. So, Man. you know what I'm saying? The, now, 
It's, it's like you it's like you've done these things before you rolled me right into our next segment man I told you this ain't your regular interview this ain't your regular uh, you know YouTube video whatever with us um, we're here to talk some football with a guy who knows some football and we're here to talk yeah. specifically about Georgia football and now Davin this is literally the opening play against Auburn and I get a lot of questions from fans about hey why does Georgia run this defense or why shouldn't they run this defense why are they a 425 on some downs why are they a 3-4 with four right. DBs on other downs and the way I've right. always explained it Davin and you can correct me if I'm wrong here but it's about personnel matching correct if they've no, got no. heavy tight ends and heavy sets on the field we want a heavy set on the field is that not right no doubt one thing that Kirby Smart does um, that was really impressive is he had a different personnel for every group. So yeah, so he had a personnel for eleven. You know, he yeah. rolled. I think DeAndre Walker kind of played when we played speed team. So when teams came out and you know what I'm saying empty, he had a package walk and zone. And when teams came out in your more traditional eleven, you know what I'm saying and twelve, he had some more girthed up there so he did a pretty good job of of you know having personnel and matching it with whatever they came out in and that's why i think he stayed ahead of the game and that's why we rotated so much yeah and everybody always stayed fresh yeah no doubt because everybody kind of had their own package so you kind of knew what your mission was and everybody had to do their job and it was perfect I mean, that kind of answers my question. I, one of my questions that we'll get into a little bit later is just as far as how you guys signal in personnel packages and how y'all get in and off of the field in time. Right. I know that helps out uh, that the, the lines judge now stands over the football, but back in the day, that wasn't really the case. But no, nah, this, this is a prime example of it, right? Auburn's going real heavy. They opened up this game. They wanted to run power at you guys, wanted to run heavy downhill football or runs. And you guys answer with your standard Three, four, like we talked about, y'all are in a, uh, we call this a bear front defense. I don't know what y'all call it, David, right. but that's what it looks like to me. You got two sevens, a four eye, a four eye, and a head up zero right there. That's a stacked line, and you'll see no Georgia doubt. do this even now. Um, what, what was it? Was this the game plan against Auburn? Did y'all expect to come in and see these guys trying to run heavy, like old school power football? Well, to be honest, we should remember the first time we played them that year. I think yeah. they ran 280 yards on us, and that was the first time a team had just physically um, just Dominated wore down. line of scrimmage on y'all. Um, and, um, you know, not to make any excuses, but that first game, man, we was, like, beat up, you know. Um, so this game, you know, we kind of knew they were going to try to do the same thing. They really attacked our edges Like they're doing right here. They open up and go, right. jet, like, toss, sweep, reverse, actually. No, we'll spin no out. And and this this guy setting this edge out here, he gets away with one right here, Davin. I think he holds you on your leg. We'll get a better angle from it on the top. But man, you do a great job right here, keeping your shoulder square or square and stretching the edge with him, making and sure you're the most out. outside furthest man. Go ahead. No doubt. Um, so you can, if I can remember about this time, you know, this is about what three, four years ago. So yeah. the Aubrey plan was, you know, we used to look at that guy right there number 21 that sniffer or that 47 back. yeah this sniffer yeah. right here i'm glad you call right. him a sniffer too people make right. fun of me because i call him a sniffer yeah no doubt but he's a sniffer that's good old south coaching uh hell yeah he, he's a sniffer and uh shouts out to that guy man he used to bring it all the time man um but we used to game plan to see what he was lined up at so i'm guessing right now he's kind of lined up he's um, right in b gap davin he's right, right there in between the guard and the tackle so I know he's coming back because he's cut down his splits. Usually his inside foot will be right outside that tackle's foot or yeah. kind of almost or, where or 12 tackle. is right there, right? Typically they For line sure. that he's more of an H back when he's lined up there. He's really no a doubt. true sniffer now that he's true. hugging B gap. And now he's coming back, you know. So I know he's coming back. And uh, now you just got to read his angle of departure. So his angle, angle of, depart of departure, I like that terminology, man. Oh, yeah, no doubt, man. So the angle of departure right here is kind of like usually see the first game he came at a more aggressive down angle. I know he's trying to kick he, me he out. Was hugging, he was hugging the line of scrimmage a lot tighter, trying to kick you right. out, hit in B gap. More more power off yeah. tackle, or trying to put it in your face. So right now, obviously, I can tell his angle of departure is more width. So the ball is running behind him, which nine times out of ten – now my eyes are working. Yeah, you know, so now I see you. You're locked. You're locked on the ball carrier right here. 
Yeah, I'm locked on a ball carrier. My keys have already told me that this is is it's going to be a, a stretch outside of me. So I know he's there. Now it's just all about playing football and having instinct. Now let now me ask you this: me, right. in your in your however many years, I think you were at, at Georgia four years. In your four years of practicing at Georgia, how often y'all were y'all working cut drills as outside backers? Because this is every, perfect technique, bro. Every day in individuals. Yeah. Yeah. Every day in individuals, we work technique shouts out to who's, coach who's throwing the roll ball i'm sure y'all got a roll ball <laughs> yeah it was uh it was coach Shear back then uh he's with the giants now but uh yeah man he makes sure that he went over the basics all the time with us keep that outside leg free and really man just be a grenade and kind of just hold on so help come man you know, one, thing, one thing i love about this tape and it's, it's why you've got a career in the nfl still bro you're an alert football player your eyes are always working i mean For constantly sure. For sure. And, and I think that comes with, you know, I've had that luck, that um, luckiness of where I've played the same position ever since I played park ball. So ever since I started playing football You've at been five an edge years, defender. I've been defensive end since park ball. So I've seen everything you can probably see from that angle. Now it's just off playing off eyes and technique. Now, what what do y'all call your now he's Kirby still runs this stuff. It's it's a three down, basically get as many edge or pass rushers on the field as you possibly can. Right. I think right. this is you out here. We got Lorenzo Carter in here. I can't remember who's playing those. Roquan in at A gap. And uh, I think this is Jonathan Ledbetter out here on the edge. So when when you guys see third and eight, third and nine, third and long, what what's the terminology he's using for these money down pass sets that he brings in where he's literally just Bring in house four or five, maybe even sometimes six. So this was like a kind of dime rabbits, and I don't know if you remember. Um, you know, the defense kind of has that Bama build to it. Oh, too. you think? <laughs> so if you remember when Pru was there, and it was me, Jordan Jenkins, Leonard Floyd, and Lorenzo Carter, we had the X package. So that was like in 2014, 15, mm -hmm. and that on the field at the same time. So a lot of those, that's that Bama thing kind of coming in because that was even what Pruitt ran. So yeah. right, you know, if you have Georgia guys, you know, usually, especially with this type of exotic look, you'll never see a Georgia guy. Uh, now, Zeta's different. He got, when it got like mm -hmm. 10 sacks this year, but this game plan back in the day used to be everybody can get five sacks. It was, it was all about deceptions, getting guys in their specific one-on-one, -on -one, correct? Right, right. So, Back in that time, we were more in those exotic packages where, you know, I may finish the season with five and a half. Zoe may finish the season with five and a half. Labor finish the season with four and a half. So the thing Robot was here. Smith might have four and a half. Four. So right now, we would look up to where they fly to on third down. And now these stunts are to just get to them flush one way. So yeah. Zoe down or get one-on-ones on fullbacks. So really the... That was really the thing we was doing right you there, know, one man. Thing, one thing I'll give – I don't need to give him credit, but one thing I've always noticed about Smart and even Lanning's defenses now is that, like, this year against Auburn, they knew Bo Nix was prone to rolling right. So, right. Not, no. nine times out of ten, they stunted and stacked to get a free rusher into B-gap and C-gap. And they would just no. work that way to make, you know, the quarterback basically funnel into where they're sending the free blitzers. Kind of working the same premise here, Davin. Is that correct? No doubt. And then you always see those guys who are always stacked back. It, it was either Zoe or Raquan, and those are the fast guys on the team. So when that quarterback leaves the pocket, he has no chance to get away from them. What do you, I mean, no. he's playing star, correct? I mean, basically right now, Lorenzo right. is playing star. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. I mean, no that's, doubt. that's where the whole defense runs through. You guys were told this as players, correct? Your entire defense runs through your star or your money position. Is that correct? Really, man, and that outside linebacker has to be very versatile in a Georgia defense and, and smart. You're playing star, you're playing Sam, you're playing DN, you're playing 3-4. Yeah. You know, you have coverage rules, you have rush rules, you have, you know, you, you have to keep the edge. So, you know, like I said, we was running NFL defenses back then, man. You Absolutely. Know? You stay, they still are. I mean, no I, I think – did did you find yourself picking the playbook up in, in in pro in pro ball much faster than maybe even some of your other rookie teammates, your fellow rookie teammates? Um, I think you know just guys that came from four threes, you know, or you know you didn't use the terminology, you know, mm -hmm. 
things will kind of get tough. But when you come from a three, four background, man, kind of everything kind of sounds the same. But I think, you know, the guys that kind of struggled with that when guys that came from four, three schools, you know, um, yeah. you know, it is different things like that. All right. Now, correct me if I'm wrong again here, Davin, but from my film evaluation, you were a jack. I didn't see you playing a whole lot of Sam. Didn't see you playing a whole lot of stars. Is that correct? No doubt. Jack, for sure. Yeah. And so for those at home that don't really know or maybe not paying attention, the Jack has been Aziz Ojolari's role over the last couple of years, whereas that mm -hmm. Sam backer has been more of the Adam Andersons, the Jermaine Johnsons of the world, where they're kind of right. that second outside backer that gets mixed in into the fray on third and long. But the difference, what I saw you guys doing, Davin, and, and he kind of moved away from it once you guys left, was y'all were a heavy outside backer football team. Y'all played a whole lot of traditional 3-4. Y'all weren't really in nickel or especially dime. Y'all weren't in a whole lot of nickel and dime in 2017. No, Is that correct? Because you had to realize you got an athlete like Zoe. Yeah. Got an athlete like Zoe, you know, he's a um... – oh, I'm sorry. Good. You got an athlete like Zoe, man, you know, you don't have to bring an extra safety on the field. You know, you yeah. can just fly and he'll go out and guard too. So that would be perfect. Now, I, I know he wasn't there when you were there. He came in the year after you, but you're, you're around the program. I know you work out with Nolan Smith. You're around the Chuck Smith program. You're here in Atlanta. You're around Georgia. Do you think Adam Anderson can assemble anything, or, you know, 90% of what Lorenzo Carter did for this 2017 football team? Because I think a, he can. Yeah, he's a freak, man. I actually DM'd him. Uh, I was watching the game, and I DM'd him. That speed rush is ridiculous, bro. My God, man, when you have dip like that, man, you know, you're exceptional. And uh, he's a 10 set guy for easy, sure. Right? Man. Easy money. He's a 10 set guy. Easy, man. Easy. Dab Dabby, and do you think he could get drafted just purely off of his burst and bend? Because I think he could. I mean, tr the league is looking for athletes, yeah. you know. And you have been like that, you know, and pass rush comes that natural to him, you know. But of course he can go to the league. That's not a question. He's a freak for sure, man. He's fast, man. Let's get that this from the top. I think y'all are in. Ah, uh, shoot. But, yeah, I, I think he's one of the best, if not the best athlete to come through Georgia in, yeah. I mean, basically since Lorenzo, probably. He has that Leonard Floyd uh, look to him, too. Yeah. Now, a random observation I had during film, and we've kind of already talked about it, but we're talking about you – we're talking about Lorenzo Carter. We're talking about DeAndre Walker. We're talking about Jonathan Ledbetter. All at the outside linebacker position. I know Ledbetter kind of swung back and forth between that Malik Herring defensive end, right. true defensive end role, and right. OLB, but he was still probably in the mix during practice. Mm -hmm. when, when you got those guys on your roster, I mean, how did he go about making sure y'all were on the field, getting playing time, keeping everybody happy? Or was it you guys just being good teammates? Kind of just like I said, you know, when we first started, man, we had a different lineup for everything they came out in. You know, uh, I I think we played Bama, and they came out in heavy Big 22. You know, we had led at outside linebacker. Yeah. Instead of, you know, we just had it, you know, however you want it. And that comes with depth. You man, know? It's, so almost like, depth. it's almost like a hoops team, right? You go into a, in a basketball game, and you're like, hey, man, this is our night where, we, you know, our, our point guy's got to score 35 points for us to win tonight. You know? For sure. And then the next night, he need 10 assists. And the next yeah. night, you know, so that's just how it was, man. You know, everybody ain't on that team, man. And, and here's, here's kind of what I'm talking about, man. I mean, you come out here, you know, two snaps, three snaps later, and you've got, I think this is DeAndre Walker up here and David Marshall down here on the bottom. Just now, I mean, go ahead. Sure. And look how spread out it is. Yeah. So that sniffer is not sniffing the button yeah, no he's outside more. Outside the tackle slightly. They got a spread, you know, a slot. So that was kind of more DeAndre's game. You know, we knew, you know, we wanted Dre to just go and pass yeah. rush, play in space, and just be the athlete he was. So, you know what I'm saying? This was his package, and this was his time to shine. And, you know. and honestly, this is the package that Georgia fans have become accustomed to over the last two years. For this sure. Is, this is their base package. This has but been 13 over the last few right. years. This has been 10, and they stay in nickel 425 all game. For sure. And now, I mean, that's because 
every team in the SEC has just got to spread it out. You know, everybody's scoring points now, man. You know, it's it's not those ten to seven games no more. You know, it's yeah, twenty eight. It's, it's definitely uh, not. It's definitely not Auburn opening up the SEC championship game with like four powers in a row out of twelve personnel. That's I know, I'm sure. Yeah, the SEC is not that anymore, man. They, Hey, this 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 number three is pretty damn good. Buddy. I think this is Roquan checking the back out of the backfield. That dude's nuts. What was it like playing with him, Davin? I know we're here to talk about defensive ends, but what was it like playing with Roquan? Oh man, he's an eraser. You know, he kind of reminds me way of. To put uh, it. He's an eraser. He, yeah, uh, he reminds me of. Uh, I was in Houston with Zach Cunningham, and if you get, you know, what I'm saying, call out your gap. And you got a linebacker like those two, man. Mm -hmm. They're just erasers, man. You know, he just covers so much ground. And they're just athletes. And he just beat the blocker to the point. And they make up for a lot of mistakes on the defense, man. So, McCoy definitely made everybody's job a lot easier. Absolutely. And, and right into the, the – literally the very next play. So, y'all y'all are about to get off the field. I think we're in, like, third and 12 at this point. It's the situation. Y'all were in nickel. Now you go dime. And this is a different way of him getting pass rushes on the field. There's you. There's Lorenzo, and I think this is Tyler Clark and David Marshall, or maybe Jonathan Ledbetter. So we got four guys that can really get after it. Their, their MO is to pass rush, get upfield, and get after the quarterback. Right. I, my, my question, Davin, is, is how long did it just take you to, to learn the personnel packages? Not, not even the playbook, the slants, the stunts, the blitzes, <laughs> the drops, but just the personnel packages alone. How do they go about installing those things at Georgia? Because this stuff ain't easy, bro. Right, but you know, so like I said before, man, Pruitt was there two years before, and it's kind of the same defense. You know, it it all has that Bama uh, feel yeah, to it, or that you know. So really, we was kind of running the same stuff that we was running when Pruitt was there, and uh, when Kirby came, he just added a few things and a few words changed, but basically it was the same thing. So now we've been in that. Same system, that same playbook for four years. Well, I've only know, been in, I've only been studying this system for about two and a half, and my <laughs> mind still gets blown a little bit. So forgive yeah. me. <laughs> it gets a little easier, you know, once you break it down. Like I hey, knew I'm either like, and it sure as hell would help if I knew the terminology. It wasn't just making it up on my own. If I knew the playbook, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, no doubt, no doubt. But you're doing a good job if you just kind of watching film and guessing what we're doing. I appreciate it, bro. All right, we're no going doubt. to 707 next. Let's see what I got for you here. Hey, this, hey, you save a touchdown right here, bro. I want you to talk through this because you sniff this out in like nobody's business. Now, I believe you guys are in some type of zone. Maybe, man, I don't know. But when this guy motions to the boundary right here, you immediately kick out. And you know, like, your, right. your, your alert buttons are on. You're ready to roll. No and doubt. No doubt. What they end up doing is they roll this guy. Zoe comes down and blitzes off the edge like any 3-4 outside backer that was playing in space that just had number two go away, and you bump right. out. Now, right. let's, let's stop it where you bump out. And you are a little hesitant now. He runs by you. I'm going to give you some credit. You catch on to it, and you're like, hey, I got to flex out. I've got curl flat now, right? Yeah, uh, well, actually, I'm supposed to stay inside of him anyways, and I think we changed that, um, we changed that strength call. So at first, before he came in motion, Here, Zoe we'll get had back to walk to it. Hold on. No doubt. You said before he came in motion. So let's stop you at the top. Let's talk through this. I want you to educate me on this. All right, here he is. Okay. So now he's at the top. So now that passive strength is to the field. So that strength, means it's, strength is left right now. Right. Strength is left right okay. now. So that means we. So that means we need Zoe in coverage. So that's why Zoe walked out. As soon as that comes back, it changes. Now it goes from, at first it was Larry. Larry me, the guy on the left side rush, me. And now it's a Ricky. Now it's a uh, Ringo. So now Zo oh, goes. And now, lucky right, Ringo. So, now, so now I bump out. But I understand that I don't have the slot man. So yeah. that's kind of where this defense is perfect. We know that teams are going to take advantage of us walking out. So anytime we had to walk out, we just had curl flats. So it just so worked perfectly. My, my question is, how, how do you have the wherewithal? I understand you got curl flats because you're the curl flat defender, but as soon as you sniff right. it, 
you end up collisioning this guy trying to release on the wheel. That's what they're trying to right. hit. Right. No doubt. No doubt. But see, what I tell a lot of football players is, especially young football players, and this is why I love the coaching that I had. You know what I'm saying? You play run first. Mm-hmm. Right? You play run first no matter if you're dropping. You see what I'm saying? So it, if you take it back, I initially can't just drop and go out of there because I have to play run first. So me playing run first – for sure. Me playing run first brings me right to my coverage. Yeah. All right, so we're right so now. There you come downhill to set the edge. Okay. Right. You, you still got to be careful. And now I can obviously see. He's trying to release. He's trying to release. And you just stonewall him, bro. So I'm playing run first and now this is my guy. This is three so now you're, to the now you're, now you're zone matching, right? Yeah, because they tried to bring three late to the flat, and they tried to hide him. So they tried to hide him with the play action. They tried to, you know what I'm saying, tuck him in the line of scrimmage, hoping my eyes would get lost. And then three came late. And since three is late, he's mine. That's a, a, a great lesson for young defensive ends, young, and maybe sure. even young corners, about keeping your eyes right, right? Just keeping your eyes right, man. Keeping your eyes right. Always playing with eyes and instinct. And playing run first. A lot of guys don't play run first if they got a drop. You know, my responsibility right there is still to set the edge if it is a run play. All right, now let's talk about Zoe right quick. He's out here. We're back in – I mean, you're back in a star position, right? This is no longer him playing right. Sam. He's now out flexed. If they were to have ran a play, his butt would have been curled flat out there in the field, correct? No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. He would be. So, he you be. feel comfortable. If you're sitting down watching next year, first game of the season, you're watching Georgia play Clemson. You feel comfortable if Clemson comes out in two by two that Adam Anderson can go out there, flex out, and cover curl flat to the field? For sure. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, most, and, and I'm not going to lie to you, man. If you're a three, four outside back in, in this day and age, then you have to. Yeah. And, and, and college and the next level. And we have the athletes to go on that team, man. You know, those guys are tremendous athletes, man. Those guys can walk out and play curl flat. You know, it's. Really not too hard, man. Because usually, man, you're either matched up on a full on a full back or a back. You know, as long as you you're getting out, pressure, though. If you're out, if you're out no there doubt. covering curl flat for ten to fifteen seconds, you're in trouble. You are. You are. You are. Now, I, I want to talk to you about rush freedom. Okay, I, I want to know. Take me inside the meeting room. You are sitting down with Trey Scott, Kirby Smart, sitting in on the meeting. Y'all are talking. All week long. You got a relatively mobile quarterback. He ain't Johnny Manziel, but he dang sure right. ain't uh, Jared Lorenzen standing back there sitting still. Right. What no, no. are your do's and don'ts as a pass rusher? Are you not allowed to rush past the spot? Are you given a two-way go? Um, are you taught to mush rush? Talk me through what going into a week as a Georgia pass rusher, what are you told you are allowed to do and not allowed to do? Well, right now, those guys have complete freedom now they have way more freedom than we did back in this back right here it depend on the quarterback so it's a big play, play for you in, this is a strip sack by the way no doubt uh when we um this play was i was meant to rush high anyways because i think i had somebody coming with me when you say rush high you mean you mean run the run the hoop fish hook fish hook and run the hoop yeah. i think i had somebody coming with me i think somebody's blitzing with me let's take a look i'm not mistaken but I know I was to rush high, and, and the left side was to kind of pinch in so we can flush him to the right. And I, and then he thinks they're going to escape to the right. Y'all are baiting him again. It baited him again. So, so you're telling I me this – so this defensive end is doing his job. This this defense on the, on the top side, the field side right here, he is literally right. just holding that right tackle in place. He's not even trying to push up field. That's kind of what I meant to say. That top side is going to pinch in, and I'm going to rush high to make his eyes think, okay, I feel the pressure from the backside. He's rushing high, but I have a escape outlet, you know what I'm saying, to the right. Who's this? So that's Stidham. Dog water. So it worked perfect. <laughs> so it's, it's situational rushing, right? I mean, you have your job it's, on that specific play. No doubt. And me knowing I'm to the boundary and I'm on the backside, I can kind of rush high. And kind of take my shot because you can't see me. 
It's a. It so looks I like can... a. It looks like a long arm cross rip. Is that what, a cross chop? Is that what you work on? Oh uh, right man, here? that's Let's that's not even a. Pro... What are we working with the hands right here, Daff? Uh, I think it was a jab. It was a jab to get his hands to shoot. Jab with the inside hand. You're giving him a feint, right? But it was a jab with the inside leg, though. Oh. If you kind of see, it's kind of it's kind of a skip. So watch the left. I get off. Boom. And then back. Infinity lunges. You're just trying you to clear your left it. hip with that skip, aren't you? You're right, right. And then as soon as I skip, I'm throwing my hands, too, and you just time it. When'd you learn that one? See, honestly, with you, man, you just do a lot of hand combat. And yeah. when you're out there rushing, your hands, well, your feet always catch up with your hands. You're a good So if you do it, yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I do a lot of hand training. So now, if I can knock the hands down, my feet are going to follow the hand. So I don't know what Always the attacking are. the ball from the backside, too. No doubt. Always. I mean, the sack's cool, but the fumble's money. No doubt. And that was that's, the game. That's the funny right thing I, I find about NFL and even college. If, I, if I'm if i a rusher and I slap the ball out, I get the strip sack, too. I ain't even got to take you down, right? You ain't even got to take you down. You get the strip and the sack. You, you, you ain't even got to get your clothes dirty sometimes. <laughs> ain't even got to get your clothes dirty. All right, let's watch some Tennessee tape, man, because it, it, it shows exactly what you're talking about, where it is personnel matching. Because I'm going to tell you what, Tennessee opens this football game in damn empty, and you're flexed out oh, yeah. into the boundary. No, yeah, no doubt. Here we yeah, go. They tried to. Now, a, a lot of. T- go go ahead. ahead. I said a lot of teams knew. I think at this time we had like a number two rushing defense in the country. I mean, our you, you could not run on us, you know. Still can't. Legit. I mean, still can't. Uh, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I'm just speaking about this film right here. We had big John Atkins, big, big uh, Trent, uh, big Ledbetter. So a um, team tried to spread us out because they knew they couldn't run on us. So they, oh, they just opened it up five wide. Now, I mean, you've been playing defensive line so damn long that you know how bad odd front defenses mess up combination blocks. Do you guys? I mean, it's it's a purpose at Georgia that you do it that way, right? Because everybody's yeah. running such standard inside zone power and counter concepts that if you throw them something that is going to jack up all of their combination blocks, you're going to have them right. beat just based off of assignment. Just based off assignment. And you kind of want those guys to be as, be as confused as possible when it's trying to count you down. That's or funny. When to as offensive linemen, we always try to confuse you guys. Right, I already know. <laughs> <laughs> it's... It's chess, not checkers, always. So wait a minute. You're you're telling me your defense line coach told you offensive linemen were stupid? Because <laughs> my offensive line coach told me defense linemen were stupid. <laughs> yeah. He told you the other way around. You know how I go. <laughs> my 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 offensive line coach used to say, "Hey man, all they got to do is find the ball. That's all they got to do." <laughs> you see? Yeah, he laughing. He having a good time. Hey, oh, we man. always told y'all out of shape. We always told. Uh, we always tell they gotta shake so when they get tired, they don't wanna think no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you damn right. When I'm when I'm sucking wind, the last thing I'm doing is thinking about what, what the guy in front of me is about to do. Hey man, I wanna tell you this. This is this is why you play on Sundays. This guy runs a little speed out right here. You sit on this speed out better than than most outside linebackers Georgia's got right now. Oh, that's kinda just that was kinda just, you know, I ain't gonna that was preparation also. You know, we yeah. prepared crazy. You know, Kirby is gonna have you prepare man you're going to see everything on saturday yeah you're going to see that 30 times monday through friday so now david we've seen this i sorry to cut you off but i i know why but i want you to explain to the audience why you have such inside leverage and you're cocked outward right here on this lineup i mean you are facing towards the sideline right here no doubt well i know if he crosses my face, this breaks the whole defense down. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? If he crosses my face, then I screw up everybody's coverage. So it's my job to make that guy go out. Yep. So my thing is I, I don't want to give him a two-way go. I want to give him a one-way go. You know, if you want to go inside, you're going to have to run me over. And um, and we kind of seen that route 30 times during the week in 707. And I knew that every time that they spread me out, you know, it was probably going to be a um, quick out. Yeah, but my thing know. was, yeah, yeah you, you're going to have to run me over to get inside. <laughs> to get back know. inside. No doubt. I see what you're talking about, too, because 
you fire Roquan into into front side or boundary side B gap right here. The linebacker right. when when Davin says if he gives up inside leverage, the whole defense is screwed. Well, because there's a big void right here when Roquan fills. No doubt. Because Natrez, by the way, I mean, holy hell, holy hell, how many NFL guys we got on the field? One, Jesus two, Christ. Natrez is still in field or in camp. I believe that's J.R. Reed still in camp. DeAndre Walker yeah. with Kansas City. Yeah. Is Ledbetter still playing? Yes, yes. He with the I mean, Dolphins. I mean, NFL guys all over the damn field. Yeah, you know? like, that was a lot for sure. Whole lot of dudes. Yeah, I already DeAndre Baker's down here at the bottom. We already got him. Man, a, a whole lot of guys. Now, and, I oh, do, I first. do still think I, I really do think a lot of answers about this year are in right here because I'm gonna tell you what. Over the last couple of years, instead of going a, th- a, a, th- oh, y'all, in a y'all in a four two right here and you're flexed out, they walked you yeah. out right. You would have originally been down. Right. Let's say this is a, a sniffer or a Y. Instead of, you know, two by two. Or actually, they're straight up empty. Last couple of years, Davin, and empty. It hasn't been the OLB walking out. The OLB has walked down. They've gone four man fronts with the backer walking out. They will walk the wheel out over the running. Right. So, right, my question right. to you is, why the philosophy change? Because this, this won't happen. I understand they're trying to blitz Roquan. Roquan was one of the best blitzing linebackers right. college football has seen. But why the philosophy change? Why isn't Kirby, you know, maybe not necessarily comfortable, but why isn't he flexing defensive ends, outside backers out, as opposed to just running the backer out there now? Well, I think, you know, uh, it's different builds. Yeah. You know, 13, it's Aziz, and it was Malik. Mm -hmm. So you really, Malik is kind of that hybrid, that DN and 3-4. And, you know, he can play 4-3. Um, so you really don't want him walked out. Yeah. You know, his thing is going forward, stopping a run, you know what I'm saying, and getting to the quarterback, doing Brady what he does. Run for an undersized right, defense. for sure. Man, that dude's stout. No doubt. So with this team, me and Zoe kind of had that versatility yeah. where you could walk us out. You see what I'm saying? So you really – you want to play to your player's strength. So you want to Z rushing because he's the best pass rusher in college football. So you don't want him – Walking out all the time, and then your uh, Malik Heron, who's you know from the opposite side, you know he's kind of more that DN girth guy. Mm-hmm. But in that last you know what I'm saying formation, you got Zoe, who's a versatile, long basketball player basically, mm-hmm. and me on the other side. Oh, he was so cold. Man, he was cold as hell at Norcross. Oh my no God. doubt, he was. He was. For that dude sure. was gamming on folks. Yeah, you got two basketball players out there, man. You can walk them out. Oh, you hooped? You know, I was, yeah, for sure, man. I was all state. The crazy thing about it is, you know, we used to do the same thing when Lorenzo was there. You know, they used to have the, uh, I mean, not Lorenzo, but when Leonard Floyd was there, they used to have Leonard Floyd on one side, and they used to have Zoe on the other side. And when you have that, when you have athletes like that at outside linebacker, you don't have to go, you know what I'm saying, the nickel. All right, let's, let, three, four, let's talk a little bit out. about let's talk a little bit about you right quick instead of just Georgia schematically. Now, I noticed through watching about two and a half hours of film of you in college today, you love this lead arm and what I call you know sticking the lead arm right inside lead arm and then cross right. chopping and then sinking the rip and getting around the edge. Now, my question to you, no doubt. my question to you is, have we figured out? So you got the counter to the long arm stick, which is the overhand cross chop. But right, have you figured out right. the full, like, like next level move of actually feinting the long arm and then ghost technique? And have we got? I know it's tough for a six foot five yeah, guy, <laughs> but have we gotten that? I know I, Chuck. I know Chuck is teaching that, and I know you can probably I, do it. You're a good enough athlete. But have we added I, that to the arsenal? Have we put that in the bag now that we're in pro ball? I ain't gonna lie to you. This was what four years ago, man. My bag's so crazy right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I got it all. How you want it? For sure, no doubt. But I uh, I remember so the first thing I used to do, man, I used to see how much the guy weighs. He's thin, man. You know? This Tennessee guy yeah, is thin. So, yeah, so when I used to watch uh, film you know, on Monday, I used to see how much the guy weighs, see what grade he was in. You know, I think he was a freshman. 
Uh, yeah. yeah, he was a light. He was a freshman. So that year freshman, and, 285, but really listed at 300. But you know the scouting reports really like 285. For you're, sure, you're thinking, no bull, you're thinking bull rush all day. Uh, I'm I'm not doing no moves. He's too <laughs> young. First, we gonna test his manhood right quick. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. I think he ended up being a pretty good player though. Good for him. He does look real thin no in this. I'm, I'm, that's I, I. You know, I expect you guys to be watching film. I don't know how com- is it is it that common? Are you guys are some guy? I know there's mandatory you know film sessions every day in college. At least for me, it was Monday right. through Thursday. We had six a.m. meetings before our seven a.m. lifts. Um, where right. we were watching film, you know, practice both practice and the next opponent. But how much you know film study on your own were you doing in college, Davin? And if you could you know, relay how much your actual teammates were. Did you know walking in on a Tuesday, like, hey, man, this dude ain't been watching film. I know because he's asking too many questions. And so I'm not going to lie, man. We, um, that, that team, that's what made us different. You know, everybody was on their, everybody was on their stuff. You know, when Quan watched film, man, me and Zoe used to link up together and watch, you know what I'm saying, the tackles, man. Saying what you just said, you just circled, 10 pros on that yeah, video. A whole bunch of pros. And really, and really it could have been 11, you know. Um, so we carried ourselves like pros. You know what I'm saying? We watch film like pros. We practice hard. You know, we practice like pros. And um, and most so of you guys, I, I mean, all, except for apart from Roquan, almost all of you guys decided that y'all are coming back for this one. Right. It's, it's for yeah. sure. So when you decide to do that, man, you don't cut corners, you know what I'm saying? We came back for a reason, you know, it's no point not to watch him or not to look at the scout report, you know, and then you're playing for your livelihood also. Now, I know my my audience will, will recognize this, but Georgia did this in the bowl game against Cincinnati, you know, without, I think they were trying to get a look at what they were going to experiment with for next season because they knew, um, you know, they knew Aziz was probably heading out. They were trying to get as many reps as they possibly could. So they did a lot right. of this in the bowl game. But since Lorenzo's left, they haven't really left the outside backer out here in space like this. Um, and it's kind of what the whole purpose, not necessarily the whole purpose of tonight, the whole purpose of tonight was hang out with you and shoot some bull about football. Sure. But, I mean, do you see Georgia moving back to a traditional 3-4? Or do you see them just saying, hey, look, man, that, that's not the way the game's played. We'll just have to find five defensive backs because I'll be honest with you studying the roster and you've probably studied it well Devin I can't find five or maybe even six because Kirby loves to go dime on third and long I don't know if Georgia has six SEC ready defensive backs right now today they may in August but if you're the head coach if you're the defense coordinator of a defense like that that you know you've got a heavy front seven football team do you get back to running more of this kind of stuff if you know you've got Adam Anderson that can play this Lorenzo mode? Uh, see, it's kind of tough just because the game has changed yeah. so much in, in the last three years. Like, yeah. even, you know what I'm saying, Nick Saban said it, you know, he doesn't, his game plan or his recruiting isn't to compete in 21 to 14 games. He understands that he has to put 30 points up a game. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're looking at film now, and people are still playing in like 11 and 12. And yes, they'll be split out, but sometimes that guy is a tight end. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now you got Devontae Smith, Waddle, you know, and yeah. you got Cat. And now that guy's Cal Pitts, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just so hard to even, even the great athletes like Lorenzo matched up on. You know what I'm saying? Those type guys. And then, you know, Lorenzo is just a once in a 10 year. Yeah, athlete. I was about to say, once in a, a, a basically a generation. I mean, that dude. No doubt. Yeah. You don't find too many outside linebackers. And that's what I mean. Like, you don't find too many outside linebackers that can play three, four. And then when a team switches and goes spread, you're at, Sam is so athletic that he can guard receivers. Yeah, you know the only the only two people I seen do that while I was there was Leonard Floyd and Lorenzo, and that's kind of where they Flo did it I, first, and then I see Flo I do still it. think I still think if you gave them and they're doing it according to what the people that I talked to, sure. if you gave Adam an off season to figure out, hey, look, I don't need you to survive, I don't need you to thrive out there, I don't need you to make a whole bunch of plays, I just need you to be able to survive. 
to where if I leave you in space and I stack somebody over the top of you, they're not automatically keying blitz from the field. I just need you to be for able sure. to be out there no and doubt. survive. And I think he can. And he definitely can, no, for sure, because he's a freakish athlete also. Yeah. He's one of those guys who that can fly. You know, his his speed dip rip is one of the best I've seen in college, you know. And, and like I said, I played with some good guys. Um, his his dip is different, you know. Yeah. You know, he has different – he has elite speed, you know what I'm saying, elite NFL speed. Well, I, I'll tell you what, Davin, I learned some some great terminology from you tonight. Uh, oh, primary, yeah. Primary example, dip. I'll tell you what, I've been tired of saying the word bend for about – Two years now. So now I've got dip in my bag. Dip, dip is a, yeah. a good one. Dip, burst, and bend all kind of in there, mixed together. In the end there. Business. For sure. No doubt, man. I'm glad I would help you get some uh, pass rush lingo. Hey, that's know. that's why I hang out around guys like Chuck Smith. You know, I played offensive line for a long time. I didn't right. study the other side. I just studied how to block you, how to stop you, what your best two or three moves were going into no a football doubt. game. But I damn sure don't know the terminology. So that's why I like to soak up as much knowledge as I can from guys like you. And it's funny you say that, man, because the thing I like to do is, especially I started doing this in the league, man, I just started, you know, going to hang out, you know, in, a, in the offensive, offensive line. line doing, you know, you know, kind of go hang around, you know, some offensive line a little bit, you know, so kind of see how they – Thing. So yeah, just go, just go see what, what they got going on, what they're looking for, for sure. what kind of tendencies no they're looking for, things like that. Hey, but Davin, I'm man, always seriously, bro, I, I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. Um, and if I you did, ever wanna, man. I appreciate it. If you ever want to talk shop, talk some ball, brother, you know who to hit, hit up. No, man, I appreciate you having me, man. Thank you. No doubt, Davin. Appreciate you. No doubt. Go dogs, man. <laughs> Attaboy. All right. Let's see if we can get Davin out of here. All right, man. I don't know about you guys. I know Dicko had a, a smile on his face like he was a seven-year-old on Christmas. So I hope y'all enjoyed that as much as I did, as much as Dicko did. I hope the tech held up. Did the tech hold up? We're all right. The tech held up. Hope the picture looked good. Hey, we're going to keep experimenting and trying things like this. Um, so I'm sure Davin's not going to be the last Georgia football player or former Georgia football player at that that we'll be having on here. Um, like, subscribe, rate, review, do all that good stuff before you leave. Um, and if you liked what we got going on today, visit patreon.com forward slash Brooks Austin. That's your way of supporting this show, supporting this studio, so we can keep having cool stuff like this and keep affording a great producer back there that kicked absolute ass tonight in Dicko. So I appreciate him for toughing it out tonight. He is battling through some injury. Um, and I didn't sneeze tonight, so screw you, allergies. To heck with you. All right, Brooks Austin, I'm the film guy. We'll see you next time.